am I so awkward today? Welcome back to Amber and Abridged. I'm Amber, and this is a short story Sunday. I haven't posted one of these videos in approximately 800 years. I'm excited to be back. It's gonna be pretty short and sweet. We got a short story, like a short, short story, and um, I don't have, you know, a dissertation on it. So today I'm gonna be talking about a story from this collection. This is, this collection is People from My Neighborhood by Hiromi Kawakami, uh, translated by Ted Goosen. Uh, this was a gift to me, a Christmas gift from my friend Sam, who you might know from Sarcasm and Sci-Fi, and also from our duo channel, The Drunken Library. Uh, she heard about it, and that it was a weird collection of Japanese stories and so she thought Amber needs this. She wasn't wrong. So I'm gonna review a story from this. I'll probably review some more stories from this. Honestly, uh, I want to get in the habit of trying to post much more regularly, especially for the short story Sunday videos, but it starts by starting. So here we go. Uh, so the first story in this collection is called The Secret. And the first two sentences really kind of set up the normalcy of a very not normal situation. So I'm just going to read the first two sentences to you. A white cloth was lying at the foot of a Zelkova tree. When I walked over and picked it up, I saw a child underneath. It proceeds to get kind of weird. Now, I wasn't sure if this was supposed to be magical realism or if this is supposed to be some sort of unreliable narrator, maybe the narrator is uh, not exactly mentally sound because the I've read a couple of the stories in here, not that many, I think of three, four of them, and they all seem relatively as though they, there's no magical realism in the other ones necessarily. So the way that this one is structured, it either implies that there's something supernatural going on or that the character is not necessarily sound. The child that the narrator finds underneath the tree is a little boy and for some reason uh, he he gets mad that she took the cloth away and demands to follow her into her house where he then proceeds to shower and eat and dance around naked depending on how old the kid is I get it but also uh? but then she talks about how she ended up confiding in the kid about her life her her ups and downs saying that the kid was an unexpected good listener and then she talked about how sometimes he would leave and sometimes he would come back and she would ask him why he would leave and he said I don't know I just had to go away sometimes and the narrator says that at one point I began to doubt he was a human child it didn't matter to me though and then we get a par paragraph break and then next or like a whole like space break and next thing we know he's been with me now for 30 years and then she goes on to describe that he hasn't aged. He's still a child 30 years later. So the way that I read this and after the 30 years, she talks about how she's had pets and they've all come and gone. They've passed. But she's talking about how all of these pets have come into her life and then passed away. How she's developed a fear of death, but that this child has stayed with her as a child for 30 years. And everybody comes and goes, but the child stays the same. And to me, when reading it, it felt very much like a, like the child is representing uh, the, I totally drew a blank. Oh my God. <laughs> to me, it feels like the child is representing that, you know, life has an ending. It's a reminder of the fluidity of life and that death is part of life 
and that sometimes, you know, you, you look at a kid and you don't think about death, but then to kind of place this child's creature next to all of these other creatures that are getting old, dying, and this child isn't dying, I feel like that's an interesting juxtaposition to highlight the, the, the presence of death being part of life, which to me is very Japanese. <laughs> the story makes me think of the impermanence of life and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily talk about what you choose to do with your life. I mean, this character doesn't really reveal a whole lot about what she's done in that time, aside from mentioning the animals, which I think just highlights how time has passed and that death is very present in her mind. I believe it's her, but in their mind. And, and then just to have this kind of jarring, unexpected way of of being forced to think about it a lot more than people normally would. I just found it really interesting. And I, as I kind of mentioned, I feel like there was, when I first read it, I was like, oh, is this magical realism? And then, you know, upon reflection, I was thinking maybe the child isn't real. Maybe it's a figment of the, the narrator's imagination. You know, when it, uh, the, the, the narrator mentions whenever they talk about um, jilted lovers and and um, some other things that are probably more appropriate to talk about with children. Tales of woe, failures at work, jilted lovers. And so I feel like maybe it's the character's way of, the, the narrator's way of dealing with life. And, and so, you know, it's not a child. It's not anything. It's just something they created in their mind to help them deal with troubles, you know? And when the child leaves for periods of time, maybe that's when the narrator doesn't need help figuring stuff out. You know, when I'm trying to figure stuff out, I just talk to my friends or I play through conversations in my head. Uh, I don't create fake children, but you know, if that's what helps our narrator get through their day, Okay then. So that's my review of The Secret by Hiromi Kawakami. Uh, I Again, it's only three pages long. It's a very short. And the pages are tiny. I mean, the, the, the print, the, or I should say the margins in this book are ginormous. This is the whole story. I've just shown you the entire story in those three pages. It's short. But I think still very substantial and, and gives you a lot to chew on. I'm really excited to dig into the rest of this book. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be very strange, uh, but hopefully also very interesting and moving. And I hope that there's a lot to chew on. So thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day and I will catch you next time.